Let's talk about mesh and how it applies to EPH20 and most other primer compounds. I've got a few references I'd like to point out. I'm currently at aardvarkreloading.com home and we're going to go to page 3. Display mesh sizes. This is a conversion chart from mesh to say microns. And I'm going to go back to home and go to primer tools. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a set of meshes. These are only six or seven dollars a piece. When I first received my set of meshes, it wasn't long before I was caught playing in the kitchen with them. I was measuring items such as salt, sugar, confectionery sugar, flour, and coffee creamer. My goal was to train my eyes on estimating particle sizes, as well as developing, literally, a good tactile feel on the subject. Whenever I say flour or flour-like consistency, I'm referring to a powder that's clean, dry, smooth, and free-flowing, and typically all-purpose flour meshes out at about 150. Mesh is a filter size measurement, or holes per inch, the space between threads. So a large mesh number indicates a small particle size. Because of its popularity, I'll talk specifically about EPH20. EPH20 is made up of these four simple ingredients, and it produces a non-corrosive primer recipe. Lead nitrate comes from your supplier as a clumpy and crusty material, so we need to work on it a little bit. I didn't know this early on, but a ceramic mortar and pestle is actually porous, so you don't want to put your lead nitrate or any lead product into your mortar and pestle to be reduced in size because the contamination is permanent. So put 11.6 grains of lead nitrate into a large shot glass and take a glass stir rod or disposable plastic one and crush it and work it until it's a free flowing powder. Set this aside for the time being. Now they are a bit pricey but glass mortar and pestles are available. Now place 5 grains of ground glass into a mortar and pestle and if necessary reduce it down to a flower like consistency. Once you get good at it, you don't even have to see ground glass to know if it's flower-like. If you hear any snapping or cracking noises coming from your mortar and pestle, you know it's at 80 mesh or larger. If any of your glass is the size of table salt, it's much too large and must be ground down. It's a very fine powder. Your NC right out of the canister is much too large, so you can use this glass as your grinding media to reduce the NC down to its proper size. Even if you've pre-ground your NC using some other methods, you'll need to add it to the glass and grind it some more to intimately mix it. Add these two items to your pre-ground lead nitrate in your shot glass and grind it some more to intimately mix it. I came across some plastic swizzle sticks with a ball on it. And that becomes my mini pestle. From here, add your lead hypophosphite from your lab. It's already flower-like, so it should blend and mix easily with the other components. Put the lead hypophosphite in. We're just going to intimately mix it all together. Now, if you desire a more powerful primer, or one that's more suitable for rifle rounds, or magnum primers. Then add a little bit of aluminum powder as illustrated in EPH 25. 
Now, aluminum powder is a little bit different. You want 80 to 100 mesh for, of aluminum for sparks and smaller than 100 mesh down to 150 for an added fuel. It's easiest if you just purchase aluminum that's already at the proper mesh. You can find some sources on Aardvark. On aardvarkreloading.com, I'm going to go to Home, EPH20, Add Aluminum Mesh Powder. Now it's safe to say EPH20 and 25 work, but it's safe to say a big reason for failure to fires with homemade primers is not paying enough attention to your particle sizes of the components as well as not intimately mixing the components together. In general, your primer components should be all at mesh 120 through 200, but we don't know exactly where that number is. Primer components lose their power smaller than mesh 400, but that exact number is also unknown. Now, 400 mesh is equivalent to 37 microns. Do you want to know what one micron or even a half a micron feels like? Just reach for a box of cornstarch. This is Mark on ArdvarkReloading.com. If you have the financial means, donations on Patreon would be appreciated, but not required. Details below. And if you have technical questions, please join me at the MeWe group called Primer Reloading. Hope to see you there.